Hi guys, Tommy Maze here. Um, I wanted to do a different format of video today because I feel like I have a lot of information to get across in a very short amount of time to do it. So I decided to make a PowerPoint about this and hopefully we can get through it very quickly. Uh, the purpose why I'm doing this is I've been seeing a lot of people say uh, just make vanilla WoW the way it was or let vanilla just be vanilla. And every time I tried to ask them to clarify this a little bit more, I always got very different... Um, very different ideas about what they actually wanted. And so, for me, I just want to set, sit down and ask them what it was. And it was patch progression. It's, it's, the, it's the most common theme that I keep seeing from them. They keep saying patch progression. But I'm not really sure if they know exactly what they're signing up for because some of the ways they say it seems a little bit odd to me. So, this is why I'm making this PowerPoint to go over each and everything about patch progression and just talk about it as an idea. So, let's get into it uh, because I have a lot to do in a very short amount of time. So, let's get started. Okay, so main, main things that I want to go over in this video are uh, our patch progression and what it looks like. Some of the major imbalances and things that I've been, uh, I find a little bit overpowered or game breaking. And then I want to go over a quick summary with some of my personal views at the end of, about what I think about this. Um, this is by no means a full account of all the patch notes, but don't worry guys, I, in the description I've included a link to my sources. Um, now for those of you who don't know what the idea of patch progression is it's basically let's say you just start off at um patch 1.1 for example which you'll have all of the class imbalances all the problems uh you'll be re releasing a different patch at certain times either via official timeline or a customized timeline and slowly adding new content and fixes every few months so now that everyone's all caught up and on the same page let's get really right into the meat and potatoes of it um starting with 1.1 it, it released on the 23rd of November of 2004. Um, I want to keep in mind that every single patch included a metric, a metric ton of, of bug fixes. Um, Blizzard announced that if they do patch progression, they're not going to include a lot of the bugs that were in each patches, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, but some of the earlier patches didn't have class abilities. There, there were no, uh, there was no sense of class quests. They, they were super imba imbalanced racials. The, the honor system was nowhere to be seen. There were no BGs, um, and this is, I think, a pretty big one for me. And I'll go over this a little bit later. Is uh, dishonorable kills, and basically what that means is that there is really nothing stopping players who get to max level very quickly from camping you and your quest giving mobs. Um, there won't be a limit to dungeon group sizes, so the only raids that are available are Anixia and Molten Core. And you can't talk to the, the uh, NPC guy to teleport you into Molten Core or use the window to get in. Um, you'll have to actually run all the way through BRD, which is pretty crazy, right? Um, some, cla uh, some caster and healer loot is really nerfed, so they get a lot less spell power and healing, and the class balance is either very bad or just laughably non-existent um, there's also no diminishing returns or heartbeat resist in PvP you can pretty much be sheeped or feared for whatever uh, however long it, it can be there is no auto cast on wands um, there's a higher repair cost 100% durability when when you use spirit res let's see what else here there's um, trying to think I mean there's so much guys when you when you really start um, I know the flight paths was a big issue too. So the, the flight paths were slower and there were less of them. Um, there were no linked flight paths either. So when you did do a, a flying somewhere, you had to stop, get off, and then get back on to the next one. So that was a huge one that, that, uh, that changed a lot. Um, there was also a res timer that that was based around res resing as well. So even if you did get a res, you'd still have to wait for your, your uh, respawn timer. So if you died a bunch in, in a dungeon, you would still be stuck there uh, waiting to be able to accept the res. And last but not least, who could forget the mostly shitty raid loot? I mean, <laughs> this this was... um. They didn't really itemize well. I mean, I think that's like an ongoing joke in vanilla that the spirit is on everything and it didn't really help anybody but priests and druids. Um... 
Another big one is uh, plus hit chance on items didn't really counteract the increased miss chance penalty from dual wielding. So if you're a rogue or a, a fury warrior, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be needing a lot more hit, and it didn't really help that much. So what I'm trying to do right now is just paint you guys a picture of what um, what I think are some of the most important differences, and some of some of what uh, like a, a quick snapshot of what things look like in patch 1.1. So going into it. Fury Warrior's Bloodthirst acted more like Ruthlessness on a Rogue, where you could use it after you get a killing blow. And weapon damage was 100%, and there wasn't really a point to going full Fury. Most of the time, Warrior's uh, Mortal Strike was an instant ability, and people just went arms anyway for that very reason. Especially keeping in mind that um, weapons weren't normalized back then, which basically means attack power scaled with weapon speed. So slower weapons would hit even harder than what you might be used to now. So a, a Warrior can literally run up to you, Mortal Strike you one shot. Um, back then, Warriors also had an ability called Shield Slam, which had a 45 second cooldown, and this was in replacing, uh, or um, Shield Slam would later replace this. Uh, Warlocks did not have Death Coil on the, um, well, I should, shouldn't say that. They didn't have the horror effect of Death Coil. Um, basically, it was on a 10 minute cooldown, so chances are if anybody got on you and you weren't able to fear them, you were pretty much iced. Uh, Mages didn't have Winner's Chill, and Improved Blizzard lasted 6 seconds. Um, Evocate is a talent, uh, talent in Arcane. Our uh, Arcane Explosion has a cast time unless you put the five points into it to make it instant. And Druids were basically dog shit on every level, um, especially two level. They they did no damage in cap form. Uh, bear form had low armor. I mean, simply put, Druids had ha were given a different form of hell for each each form they had. Um. Umkin had no innervate, and the thirty one point talent was Hurricane. So pretty much just shoot me. Uh, Resto got Innervate as their 31 point talent with no swift mend. Rogue slice and dice can't be dodged or parried, and vanished barely worked. Uh, Paladins also had this uh, this crazy reckoning um, reckoning stack. It, it could go in, in infinitely, really. Um, I'm sure there's you guys have seen the videos of a paladin like four or five shot in Kazakh. You know, this was after he he got reckoning stacked up pretty good. Um, after he did that, reckoning was was nerfed very hard in a hot fix right after that. Okay, so moving on to patch 1.2, this is the myst uh, the mysteries of Maradon. Um, I'm going to include some of the uh, the patch art because I think it's uh, pretty cool. It came out one month after launch. So big ones in this one are Maradon added. Um, I actually probably should have said something about this earlier, but for those of you who don't know what a heartbeat resist is, it's basically an increased chance to break CC the longer it goes on so that it's more, and this is the big part, unlikely that it will last longer than 15 seconds. Um, in patch 1.2, this was also a pretty bit massive nerf to Mortal Strike because it was just crazy how, how hard it was hitting to people. But, I mean, even in 1.12, we know how good of a, of a spell it is. Um, and Bears finally got their, their much-needed armor. Um, patch 1.3, this, uh, this is like two and a half months after launch, and here's your, your pretty art. Um, I, I actually really like all these, these art pictures that they had. I thought that kind of gave a nice flavor to the... Uh, to each patch note that they gave. So, as I said uh, earlier, pre 1.3, if you wiped in Molten Core, you had to run back through BRD. Um, this added the Molten Core window, so it was a little cheat because th that shit is whack. I, I, going through BRD, because like that stuff would respawn in the time that it would take, you know? So, just have to cle re clear BRD just to go back to Molten Core, which of, yeah, of, of course, in that time, respawned. So that's insane. Um, now you can just go through the window, and that made things a lot easier if you died. Mages got crack water, but could only make four at a time. Uh, dungeon dungeon got player caps, so previously to this, you could rate anything as 40 people from Ragefire Chasm to Molten Core. Now it's, you know, five people for, for, for the standard dungeon, and then you had a few, you know, like, um, a few other ones that had, like, 15. Um, spells have a slightly increase in range, so they can hit moving targets better. So before, if you it would throw you off if you if anything moved. So imagine trying to cast on a hunter that would dance in and out of your spells range, still shooting you. I mean, it's just not fun. All right. Um, the improved and added a few more flight paths, various druid buffs to make leveling a lot easier. Uh, Mage's uh, blizzard chill duration reduced to 1.5 seconds from 6, but now it refreshes every tick. This is something that we'll start seeing later on in patches. Um, and of course, Dire Mall, which was a great place to go and have uh, get some get some nice pieces for a lot of people. Um, this is also when they added the very famous in-game voice for Ragnaros and Major Domo in Molten Core. 
All right. Patch 1.4, the Call to War. So this is this is the major the, the PVP patch where uh, honor system was added, um, stats were improved, the the warlock, paladin, epic mount quests, and molten core uh, class weapons. So like the hunter bow and the uh, the priest benediction and uh, anthema. This is also a big patch because of the spell power and healing buff that happened here. So for raiding, those of you who don't know, uh, Rag used to have a spawn timer. Or I'm sure, sorry, not a spawn timer, but um, a duration timer, which made him a lot harder to put attempts into. So if you waited longer than an hour, he would despawn, and you would have to go kill Domo again and then come back and to put more attempts on him. Um, this also made this patch also made it so that it was only Ragnaros who dropped T2, whereas everybody else was dropping T2 after that. Which is, uh, which is a pretty big uh, increase. Um, patch 1.4 is... Um, honestly, guys, it's a, it's a huge patch. Like, I think this this all adds like a, a, a nice perspective, but just look at the links if you guys are really that curious about what all the things changed, because it's a lot. I, I'm not even going to go through half of it. Um, patch 1.5, uh, this is when Battlegrounds like really, really kicked off. Um, let's see... It's a very nice piece of art. So previous to this, you know, the honor system was in, but the battlegrounds didn't really kick off until this patch, and um, they also had kind of funky level brackets. So it was like one to twenty, or I'm sorry, ten, or I'm sorry, eleven to twenty, and you you would have like that that level 20 or level 30 or level 40 like it, it was it was pretty crazy um this is also when the wand shoot ability would now toggle automatically and keep shooting and this the big one is when um when uh when rogues would jump on you if you were sitting down and they stunned you you would stay seated seated so they would just get crit after crit on you and it would just suck um a lot more quests added. Uh, again, this is a huge patch, so I'll just let you guys read it off the screen and just look into it if you want to know more. Okay, this is uh, this is a big one for me. This is like almost seven or eight months after after launch, BWL finally launches, and um, BWL Dark Moon Fair Battle Masters were finally added. Um, only one hour of attempts on Velastraz at a time. After this, you must wait 12 hours before another one hour of attempts can be tried. Um, just think about that. Velastraz, only one hour every 12 hours. So this is also when Will of the Forsaken duration got nerfed down a little bit from 5 seconds to 20. Uh, Warrior and Warlock talent tree revamps. Um, Warrior gets shield slam. This is the one where they get shield slam instead of shield discipline, but it doesn't generate as much threat until a later patch. And lots of new graveyards and uh, other flight paths. Um, quick, uh, quick addendum to this. This is also when Blessing of Freedom uh, became or will become what we remember it today. Uh, before, it used to make you immune to the damage of slowing effects as well. So uh, that's pretty crazy to me. I mean, I play a paladin, but that's crazy. Imagine being a frost mage trying to run away from a warrior who couldn't be kited and none of your frost spells did any damage to him. I mean, have fun. Um, I think this patch really realized how crazy that actually is and changed it so you can actually receive damage from Frostbolt and other slowing spells like Frost Shock, but you don't actually get slowed by it. Um, patch 1.7, this is the, the ZG launch about nine and a half months after. Um, you know, one of the funny things that I saw with that poll that passed around Reddit so much is, was that AB and ZG should be out at the start. Um, people were fine with AB, but not ZG being out, but they came out at the same patch. So, you know, go figure. Um, the debuff limit, this is a huge deal. It's a lot of classes and specs before this were, were worse off um, as a group than, than benefit because they would knock off your important debuffs, which really hurt the raid uh, viability and optimization. Um, this helped with some of the class balance issues, but made content a little bit easier than it was before. This also gave uh, cats, uh, um, uh, druid cats, a lot better leveling because it was still horrific at this time. And another big one, before all of this happened, the uh, flasks acted more like a potion, so if you died, GG. Like, honestly, you have to go get another one, and all those mats just flushed down the toilet. So, like, flasks might not have even been worth it back then. Uh, unless you were, you know, immune to death. Um, level brackets changed in this one. This this is where this is where it made uh, a little bit more fair in BGs, because imagine running around with a whirlwind axe at level 30, chopping down level 20s. I mean, it was, it was just nuts. Um... 
it was a lot of fun, but I mean, imagine trying to fight that. It just wasn't so good. So this is also a, this is also a patch where the uh, defense stat got nerfed by 30% because it was too easy for a lot of people to get defense cap. So they wanted to change it so it was a little bit more uh, challenging for people. Um, 1.8, 11 months after launch. This is your pretty picture, the Dragons of Nightmare. Um, this is also when the the, a, the AQ stuff started coming out. So you got like uh, the the stirring of the Silithid quest lines. Um, one of the big reasons that Vale, like I said earlier, that made Veilstrass so so tough for a lot of guilds was the one hour time restriction, and um, now they took that away. So you can just put as many attempts on him as you wanted. Um, keep in mind that BWL was launched about four months previous to this patch. So for four months, you only had like one hour of attempts on Veilstraz <laughs> every day. Um, this is another uh, big content patch is, is the two-hand weapon normal normalizing. Now, this was a huge thing um, as, as it basically meant, as we talked about earlier, the one-shotting. So they changed it so it didn't matter how much the, the speed was. So it was just basically attack power and all of that. So they, they definitely, it, it was a bit of a nerf to two-handers. Um, but they were still really good. Um, people could survive a little bit longer. But they also gave more more uh, of a reason to go plus hit chance, and it would now correctly add a better um, hit chance for a lot of people. So it made doing one-handers more viable. This is where you see a lot of the, the uh, two one-hander Fury Warriors start coming in instead of the two-hand Fury. Um, so that was... Uh, that was a big, big help for a lot of people and made it a little bit more fun and added a little bit more class dynamics. Okay, Warlocks uh, also got this, uh, the Death Coil buff, and I'd ask any Warlock player right now to imagine playing without any use of Death Coil, or at least Death Coil that was just an instant damage ability, more like Fire Blast, it didn't really do anything to you. Um, so just try and imagine that. So that, that was what was changed in this patch. Uh, another thing was dots were a lot more threatening now. PvE dots weren't really viable as having a guy say more dots, more dots way back in that uh, Anixia video. Like that was well and good and all, but you only had a few spots to put them on. You, did, you couldn't actually maximize the amount of spots needed. And imagine in a 40-man raid, one warlock wants to take three of those dot spots up. That didn't do, I mean, come on. Uh, so basically, in PvP, they made it a little bit more dangerous as they did more damage, but they lasted ha like not as long. Um, all in all, like 1.8 gave a lot of it, uh, nice improvements to the game, and I think it made it a little bit more fun for a lot of people. Uh, patch 1.9, this is like a, a, about a year and a month later. Um, this is the, uh, the last year that Vanilla WoW would be Vanilla WoW. In, the, uh, in one year's time from this date, TBC would be released January 15th. Um, here's your pretty uh, bug boy of AQ. So Gates of AQ was uh, an amazing world event. I, I remember my low to medium population server was crashing all over the place, um, but it really felt like both factions came out to stop an invasion. Uh, so, so many things were spawning, there were bugs running around everywhere, guilds were getting wiped all over the place, people were getting run down, huge patrols of, uh, of, of elites were like running into, into healer groups. Um, the, uh, the the big elite they were trying to kill would just have all the you know the clothies get wiped out from these these pats <laughs> uh, friendly cavalry would be running all over the place and came charging in to help people I, <laughs> yeah, I mean even like the, the alliance and the horde fight was put on hold because everyone was running running away or dying from something it, it was literally chaos um I, I did see some cross faction rivalries you know that one mage that was like oh those guys and they would just you know plant a blizzard right on top of everybody but honestly it was it was such a mess it was so chaotic it was so much fun it really did feel like a full scale war in the desert um despite all of the server crashes i would totally do it again 10 of 10 all, uh, every day um so not only that but you got the the two new raids uh aq 20 and 40 um linked auction houses basically meant that you 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 put one um you put, if you put something in one city, it would be linked together. So this was a pretty good uh, thing if you were on the same faction. So like you could go in Stormwind and buy something, and then go to Ironforge and five, find something that same item a little bit cheaper. But now it was just one auction house. Uh, multiple BGQs. Now this was pretty awesome for a lot of people because the uh, the battlegrounds you could just queue up for all of them and see which one popped first. Um, Oh, this is also a pretty big one for Paladin players. This is when the talent revamp was really, really nice uh, for anybody who played Paladin. No more single buffing a whole 40-man raid every five minutes, That because that was just insane and dog shit. Uh, some quality of life changes really aren't so bad, because, I mean, a year later they finally fixed this. 
um, this is when the like 15 minute greater blessings that would go for all parties and everything like that. So press F to pay respects to all the OG Paladin boys because they really had to suffer for a year on that because that's just nuts. Um, food buffs no longer stack. So basically for a year after the game came out, you could stack as many food buffs as you wanted. Like that, that was also kind of crazy. Okay, uh, patch 1.10. Um, this is the uh, the Nax pre-patch, which added a lot of catch-up mechanics for people, and there were necropolis stationed outside of major cities, and every so often, you know, you had a whole group of ghouls that would go running around and having a big fight, and that was a lot of fun. Um, it really did feel threatening as everyone was under attack, and Nax was coming. Um, here's your pretty picture. Um... The linked flight pass is exactly what it sounds like because previous to this we already talked about it. You would have to you know get off the taxi and get onto the new one. Um, the weather was awesome. I personally didn't get to experience the the 0 0.5 quest to get your gear, so I can't really tell you what that was like. But from what I hear, a lot of people really liked it as a catch-up mechanic. Um, this is also the patch where they added relics to druids, paladins, and shamans. So you know you got your your librams, your your uh, totems, and I forget what the druid one is, but I, I know that they got it too. Um, rogue slice and dice can no longer be do uh, blocked, dodged, or parried and missed, so that's nice. Warlock siphon life ability no longer keeps players in combat for its entire duration. Um, yeah, uh, I mean this is this is just a nice uh, uh, patch altogether. All right, so here it is. Finally, the the shadow of the necropolis. This is like, yeah, as, as you guys can see, there's your. This is one of my favorite uh, pieces of art for the uh, for the entire vanilla. I just you know, like how menacing that guy is. Um, so Nax was added, and this was right around summer break for a lot of people, so I'm really glad that they did that because the amount of farming we had to do for Nax was just unreal. Um, now, sweeping strikes... Uh, actually, let's go through the other ones. Um, upgraded PvP items, rank 14, arcane explosion, instant cast, winter's chill for mages, AV nerfed so it was a little bit more streamlined and didn't last for days. Now, the sweeping strikes was a big fix, and um, basically a warrior could use sweeping strikes charge or intercept into a group of four people and whirlwind and kill everybody instantly because it, it was uh it, it was uh procking off of everything so sweeping strikes was procking off sweeping strikes procking off sweeping strikes pro it, it was just basically like instant death for four people um the only way to to survive this was to either ice block or bubble right as the or invulnerability potion as the warrior charged in to survive it um, it, I think this patch was really important to, to PV, to balance in a lot of ways, not, not just PVE or PVP. Um, this is also when Innervate was given to Druids and they got, uh, Swift Men for Resto. Okay, patch 1.12. This is, uh, this is the final series of little patches before the, uh, coming of TBC. So the Cross Realm Battlegrounds, uh, a lot of people aren't a big fan about this one, um, Class balances and bug fixes. Uh, again, that's a pretty big one. I think 1.12 is is the the common standard for a lot of private server emulators, just because of how flushed and polished it was. Um, balance wise, the game was really up to date, and it felt like you know hybrids got a little bit more than they had in the earlier patches. Uh, the only patch after this one was the uh, TBC pre patch, like I said earlier. So you know when people say, um, you know, let vanilla just be vanilla. Um, I get a little confused, you know, this is me doing a very brief summary of what this all was. I mean, to go through it would take a long time. So I'm a little bit impartial to this patch. You know, I feel like this is a, um, you know, it would be fun to start out at 1.1, but I think it would be kind of a nightmare to a lot of the newer players who are just trying to start out. Like imagine... You know, being kind of new to Vanilla WoW or coming back after a while and having all the people with all this experience come back, they get to level 60 and they just camp the crap out of you guys. They know the mechanics, they can, you know, exploit certain things. I don't think that would be very fun for a lot of people. Um, I am generally kind of a nice guy on a server, but in my guild, we're a bunch of assholes and I know that. And yet, we're more nice than some. So... Chances are there's going to be some crazy people out there that just want to have fun killing people all day and spreading misery. Um, on the other hand, I think 1.12 would be pretty good for a lot of the newer people or people coming back just simply because it was a, it was a little bit more uh, flushed and I think it added a lot more uh, class viability, which was a little bit more fun. Um, uh, 
I think also having 1.12 would add more content because let's face it, you know, bored people are going to cause drama. They're going to go cr cause problems for other people because they're bored. And I really do think that having 1.12 out there would be a little bit more fun for 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 everybody as a whole. But per patch progression, if you were going to do it, I would say starting at 1.4 because I think that just makes more sense to me. Um, that gives people more options. Um, all in all. I think that it's going to be fun no matter which way we go on it, but I just wanted to give this out, uh, video out there and just let people decide for themselves and see what what patch progression really looks like and what 1.12 might look like. So I did my best to try and make this as uh, informational and uh, compact as possible while still attempting to be as quick and to the point as possible. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching as always. Take care.